morning and welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm your host, Justine Reichman. With me today is Jeremy Nelson and Jenny Britton. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Great to be with you. Thanks. Likewise. So, Jenny, if you would, maybe if you could just introduce yourself, your position and what, you're, what you do. Um, I'm Jenny Britton. I am the founder of Jenny's Ice Creams and I'm currently with Flora. Awesome. And what do you do with Flora? Flora is a beneficial nutrients company that um, really makes ingredients and products out of um, upcycled fresh produce trimmings. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Jeremy, so tell us a little bit about yourself, what you're doing and your title. Yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, so yeah, like like Justin said, my name is Jeremy Nelson. I'm the, the uh, chief product officer of Flora. Um, I have a background in uh, fine dining and I'm a, you know, a traditionally trained chef. And now I'm uh, going into this really exciting project here with Jenny. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And I can attest to his cooking. I've had it. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a big fan. So now, how, Jenny, you're in Ohio. Jeremy, you're in Northern California. I can't believe I stuttered saying that. How did you guys come together to work on Flora? I, Gosh, actually, yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. Yeah, no, actually, it's uh, this is this is perfect because uh, Justine, who uh, is the common link, so Justine has a uh, a uh, food startup incubator here in the Bay Area, and that's how I knew her, and she introduced me to uh, Mark Edwards, who is the president of Flora, and that's uh, that's how we got connected. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even realize that connection. So Justine, that's amazing. Wow. First of all, that you have the, the food incubator and second, that, um, that that's the connection. That's just totally cool. Well, I was happy to connect, but I, I really wanted to see, you know, I know I spoke to Mark, I know a little bit about the company and how it's evolved from beneficial bakery, you know, all these different things. Um, but I don't know, you know, what your role is at Flora and how you guys were put together. Was it to create the product? I consider, so Mark and I got involved in a completely different project uh, when we were first starting and we were working in this uh, production, uh, this produce processing company and uh, just working on the other project, the bakery project, a whole different thing. And that's when, as I was watching the watermelon kind of going, uh, the only way to cut the, the rind off the watermelon is by hand, the machines can't do it. So they were doing that and then it was going, um, the, the rinds would go kind of be taken away and there was this giant staircase sort of escalator in the produce processing company. And I had read earlier because I'd been on this sort of health trip the last few years that watermelon rind is really good for you. And that just kind of jump started Mark and I like kind of like, whoa, what happened to the watermelon? Can we, can we use it? Can we do it? And then this whole other um, path opened up for us um, that we started on, which we pretty much immediately called Flora after the Roman goddess of spring just to see if we could use these um, these kind of cast off ingredients. And they're actually really good for us to be eating. That's awesome. So there's a couple of things. I'm going to touch on one first and then go to the next. So Jeremy, where did you come into the fold here? Where were they in the process and what were you coming into to bring to the table? Yeah. So, so when I, when I first uh, was engaged by Flora, um, it was, the concept was still uh, making baked goods from these upcycled and actually fermented uh, fruit and vegetable flours. And um, I was developing recipes for these baked goods. That's how it, that's how it got started. Wow, yeah. So awesome. we were um, originally, well, we were, we, we were looking at what products can we make with these ingredients? So we can, we know we can ferment the watermelon, we can dehydrate it and a whole bunch of other ingredients. We can turn it into something like a flour, but what can we do with that? And so Jeremy came in to help us. We made an amazing pancake mix, which by the way, Jeremy, today I ate in this sort of Japanese souffle style and you have to try that. <laughs> so the pancake mix is amazing. Almond? Is it made What's with that? almond? Is it no. made with almond? Oh my God, Jeremy, I need to get some. I have some. It's fantastic. I will it's going to come back because it has literally become this like cult thing already. Um, we, we ended up not going to market with pancake mix because I stood at our, my local Whole Foods and counted 17 different pancake mixes on the shelf. And I thought there's just no way we can compete. We're going to rethink that at some point just because ours is so good and so good for you. But the idea was just that we were making a lot of different things. We made a, an amazing chocolate cake actually too, and um, some cookies and bars. 
and kind of settled on this idea of a uh, nutrition bar because we can get the most in it and have the most convenience for people. But yeah, Jeremy came in when we were making all these amazing things, which we still have to go back to at some point, but um, we're not starting with them. Well, I'll say, you know, I don't eat gluten generally. I mean, occasionally, right? But I buy gluten-free pancake and pancake mix. And the challenge I have with them is I can't find one without sugar. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's useful or not, but I thought I'd share that because that's one thing I can't find at my local store. If I go to Woodlands or Whole Foods or whatever, I'm just not finding that. So that's interesting because you can always put your own sugar in it. So, you know, it's not necessarily something that you, you need, but we're really trying to develop only with the natural sugars that are already present in fruit or natural sugars that are not, um, refined sugar or sweetened, I would say. So let me just go back to something and then I'll, we'll move forward. But Jeremy, before you, this, you were in fine dining mm-hmm. and you created beautiful experiences and you created food um, as a private chef. What was the impetus to now be part of a larger company for you? Because that's that's a little bit of a different direction. Yeah, well, I'll give a little more background. You know, I didn't I've been doing private chefing for the past in, in restaurant and food consulting for the past six or seven years. But before that, I was part of uh you know, I, I, I was a lead on teams to earn two Michelin stars at two separate restaurants. That's, you know, a lot of other things into that. But that from there, I went into uh, the consulting and private chefing. Um, but the impetus for me, honestly, was I'd been working alone for um, for a good amount of time. And I was okay with that for quite a few years. And because because actually, I'm self-motivated and I'm pretty good working alone, but I just realized that the magic happens when people get together. Connection is the point of the, of this experience that we're having on earth to me. And so it was really a, a push for me to um, connect with others. And I know from being part of really successful teams that um, when you can put your ego aside and focus on the larger vision, that you can achieve so much more than you can alone. And so that is my motivation behind doing this, along with, you know, doing something that's really good for the earth, taking all this really beautiful produce from the landfill and uh, providing high value nutrients for people. Honestly, can I just add to that? Because I, mean, I feel like when you get good people together with good hearts, and that's really what I'm trying to do, which did that at Jenny's, but also like extending that, um, you do good things and that it really is. I mean, Jeremy and I and the the rest of the team just got back from this wonderful retreat we did in Austin right before we launched the Kickstarter. And, um, you know, we just bond. And when we do that, we care for each other. And if we care for each other, then we care for other people too. We build a good company and, you know, that's, it is what it's about as Jeremy said. And it's more fun together. Totally. (laughs) Especially after what we've all been through. Yeah. It's so much more fun together to collaborate Mm -hmm. You know, tap into that community to work with other people to share to ideas. learn about other people's experience and yeah. you know just get inspired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think the the biggest thing is that you get out of your community, um, your work community, not the community that supports you, your work community, in being able to create flora? I've learned also at Jenny's um, that you know consumers say that they care about a lot of things, but ultimately where they spend their dollars uh, shows that that they often don't. And um, and inconvenience tends to be the biggest driver in a way, uh, or just you know just wanting whatever desire. Um, so honestly, the biggest thing that I get is that when we work together, we just come together as like-minded people, and then we can do these projects that really motivate, and inspire us. So for us you know, doing good in quotes is really starts with us. It starts with what we want to do is work every day. And then it kind of radiates out. It's never about like the marketing campaign. So we're not doing a marketing campaign to try to convince you that we're doing a good, you know, good stuff. Um, Because honestly, it doesn't work. What works is creating really beautiful products as a team who's devoted because we believe in the mission. And so it's got this twofold thing. We're doing really good stuff, but it also motivates us every day to get up early, stay up late, come in ready to go and do the actual work. Agreed. Makes sense to me. I mean, I'm motivated by what I do and the impact I have. So that's what gets me up every morning. So I want to go back to the fact that you mentioned, um, about the health and the nutrition of it all, right? So I'd love to hear from you, Jeremy, and you, Jenny, and we'll, maybe we'll just start with Jeremy. Um, what role does 
health and nutrition play for you on a personal level that drives your ambition to create flora and make the best possible product? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I tried. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, so I'll go. I guess this relates to a little bit of my background. I didn't share, so I also have background in uh, plant-based and health-supportive cooking. Um, so that started when I met my partner about almost 15 years ago now, and we worked together at a vegetarian restaurant uh, called um, Encuentro in Oakland. And uh, I think I went there and had your food there. I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it was much beloved. It was much beloved. Um, <laughs> And so that kind of started spark, you know, lit the spark for me about health supportive. Cause when I started eating that food, I felt so much better. And, and now, you know, with the microbiome and we're getting into all these, this, uh, you know, discovering so much about how the microbiome affects everything really, you know, how we, how we feel, how we think our brains, um, just, just, it's all encompassing. And so, when uh, when I heard about you know flora and what and what they were doing, I just really wanted to be a part of that and discover um, more about how the microbiome impacts our health. Was it something you were interested in working towards, or did this happen to connect with what your interest was on a personal level, and it was a happy coincidence? Yes, no, I was I was seeking for something that is both health driven and that is on the whole good for Earth and humans. Um, that's something I've, you know, done some businesses in the past and, you know, I, I haven't, uh, you know, I struggle with, uh, the idea of, of, a business that doesn't have a net positive on the earth and humans. And so when I heard about what we were, what Flora was aiming to do, it really aligned with what, what, what I wanted to accomplish in life. So, yeah. Thank you. So Jenny, I'd love to hear what role as from ice cream to microbiome, uh, what the, how we got from one to the other and what the health connection was for you in this new impact-driven business. Well, I, um, I still eat ice cream every single day. I'm a huge ice cream lover. I actually, I'm just, you know, I am uh, driven by pleasure in life in general. It's my number one big philosophy. I know that when something feels good to me, I will devote everything, all of my energies to that. And for me, I mean, maybe it's because I'm a Midwesterner, but I think, um, you know, for me, I know that when something feels good, it generally is good. And that's what I've learned. But I will say that as an entrepreneur for 26 years, um, like you break yourself. Part of the like enjoyment of the process, like I loved being an entrepreneur. I love it. I work really hard. And um, and you get to this place where like you're, everything's just upside down. I've been doing it for so long. I was too in it. And, um, and this happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. And so I kind of had this like breakdown moment in 2019 from there, I kind of come, I realized like all of the stuff that I didn't know, like there was all this inflammation, my adrenaline levels were just out, through the roof. I was going to work every day, just like, just absolutely charged with adrenaline. It took a long time to get out of my system. So when, um, just before COVID actually hit, I really, um, I wouldn't even say I committed to this journey. I literally surrendered to it because I didn't have anywhere else, thing else to do. Yeah. And, um, and began to regain health and really to learn what actually being in health felt like for the first time in my entire life. Uh, it doesn't mean for me that like I'm not eating ice cream or that I'm rejecting things. I mean, I just am not, I, I'm not like a drinker. So that kind of helps where I can like eat more ice cream or whatever. But it is that the two things that I think I did that were the most impact on my health were, were to start eating as much fiber as I could. And then I walk every day in the forest for as many hours as I possibly can, uh, at least one, but often four, you know, and those two things have had the biggest impact on my overall well-being. That's amazing. The forest. I know like that to me. So dreamy. It sounds like it sounds like I'm in a movie. <laughs> well, and I have a very big imagination and I know Jeremy does too. And so when I'm out there, you know, I am in this beautiful, magical reality in a way where, um, where I just feel like just connection and I, I, like anything is possible. And I'm not thinking about work and I'm not thinking about all those things, but all of my best ideas come from that place. Awesome. That's so great. So now let me, let me ask you guys, you guys both came here because you wanted to build something that was meaningful and impactful. Um, why the microbiome and why this product? Jeremy. No, I think, I think this one's for Jenny. I think this one's for Jenny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm trying to go back and forth. Yeah, I appreciate it. But no, I think should answer this. Too. 
Well, it's funny because I think we all knew about probiotics because you can't go anywhere without reading about probiotics and happy gut and all of this stuff. So I was on board with that. I drink kombucha every day. I have, there was a kombucha guy in this city and he's still around. I love him since the nineties. And like, you know, he's all over the farmer's market where I started my business. I mean, I, um, I, I knew all about that and I knew the benefits of the microbiome and I was reading about it. In fact, that's how I ended up learning about watermelon rind and kind of having that sort of light bulb moment. But I'll tell you, once we started this project, it was as our business partner, Mark says, he was up, we're all upskilling rapidly. We immediately got hooked up with um, the Ohio State University, my alma mater um, and the food science and functional medicine team over there, functional foods team, excuse me, over there and really started learning about the microbiome and uh, its real impact on our health. And what we learned is that it's, it's less about probiotics, that's important, but harder to do, and much more about prebiotics, which most of us really don't understand very much. And that's really about fiber, the fiber and certain different kinds of fiber, these super fibers are actually food for the good bacteria that already live in your gut and that really emit chemicals that can um, that just support overall well-being, but they can really cause a lot of trouble or, or create a lot of good in your overall body, whether it's mental, um, emotional, or physical health. I mean, it's um, it's amazing what just eating enough fiber will do for you. Also learned fairly recently that 95% of Americans don't get enough fiber. So this problem is real, and if it's, it's literally the one thing you could do to change your health in the most dramatic way. So what does having enough fiber mean to our bodies, our microbiome, and our health? Well, it means that our microbiome, or our microbes that are in our in our in our microbiome, are getting the food that they need to flourish. And when they flourish, like you know, quote good ones, it's more complex than that. But when the good ones flourish, you know, simply, they crowd out the bad ones. And the bad ones are nurtured by processed foods and the simple carbohydrates and things like that. So if you're eating a lot of those, you're building a lot of the sort of quote unquote bad bacteria in your gut and that can wreak havoc. And so when you're eating the good ones, they're going to crowd out the bad ones. And, um, and there's tons of research uh, out there to confirm that. And then all of, of course at Ohio state, they're mining research, but we're also going to be doing our own research as well. So when we look at flora, the product, it's a bar, right? Yeah. Okay. So when we look at that, does that, does that take away the need to have more fiber, take fiber, take your prebiotics? Is it a replacement? Like, well, I think of it as a supplement. Food? It's okay. both a snack and a supplement. So, um, so if you're, if you're eating, you know, a lot of fruits and vegetables, or if you're, if you're kind of into the microbiome, you might have already heard that you're supposed to have 30 unique plants a week. Um, and so this is a flora bar contains 12 of those. So it's just, um, it's in a way, like I kind of think of it not just as a, as a like high protein snack, which is what a lot of other bars do. And that's great too, but really as a fiber supplement, um, that isn't another giant pill that you have to swallow. I mean, but it's actually made with real, real fiber from, you know, directly from plants, it's very, um, minimally processed. And Jeremy, if you have anything to add hey, to that, no, please, you know, because, um, you know, it is, it is pretty complex the way prebiotics and probiotics work. I've been wrapping my head around it for the last uh, few months here and, uh, you know, more will be revealed as well, but how I'm understanding it right now, which I think is, could be relatable to some of your listeners is that prebiotics and that fiber, um, provide the environment for your probiotics to thrive. So they, mm -hmm. they provide the a proper environment in your in your gut for the prebiotics to do their magic as well. You know, it's it's symbiosis. It's all working together, but the prebiotics provide the environment. That's, that's probably what I have to to add. That's all. Yeah, that's right. So if you don't get your prebiotics, your probiotics have no chance to to actually have room to grow. Interesting. So what's the greatest impact you're hoping to have with flora? Oh, it's huge. We're, we're, I mean, we, we're set, we set our vision for literally like a couple of galaxies away. Um, we are really, um, we're going to, you know, this, this, we're on this mission now to, uh, convert or redirect a hundred million pounds of fresh produce streamings per year away from, uh, landfills and into your microbiome. This is all fresh produce. It's all beautifully edible. We should be eating it, but we're not. So we're trying to make that delicious um, so that it can nurture you and also our planet. So before this, how familiar were you both with upcycling? 
I mean, from my own kitchens, we compost a lot and we always try to use as much as we possibly can, obviously, because for all those reasons, all the good reasons. Um, but in the end, there's always, there's always that like waste. And, and it's even when it goes into the compost, it's not, uh, you know, that's a good way to do it, but it's not perfect. There's always more than what you can handle in that. And um, so, you know, honestly, I mean, remembering my many, honestly, decades at this point of spending time directly in my kitchen, cutting all these fruits and then having that that waste that you've got to figure out what to do with. Um, I had never actually made anything out of those or rarely um, or thought of it as a business until I saw the sheer quantity of it at the produce processing company. And then I thought, let's do something. Wow. Yeah, I can, I can, yeah, I can speak to that totally. question as well. Okay. So um, yeah, so upcycling, my passion for it came, um, you know, initially from being a chef, when you're a chef, you're in a restaurant, you have really tight margins. You want to, you know, utilize every piece of product that you bring into the restaurant. Um, in fine dining in particular, there's a ton of wastage because you want everything to be a perfect little bite of whatever it is. So uh, I can use a, uh, sunchokes, for example, uh, one dish we were doing at a, at a restaurant I was at, we would uh, make perfect little discs of these sunchokes, which made uh, eighty percent of the sun choke, you know, uh, 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 compost basically. So I had to figure out what to do with that stuff. So that's my passion: is figuring out what to do with this, with these things, and making them not only edible but insanely delicious. That's the goal. Yeah. You guys are on a well mission. said, Jeremy. <laughs> and I love the way you connect our health with upcycling to have the greatest global impact. And that to me is really meaningful. So I'm wondering, you know, you mentioned that you guys are going to be doing your own research. Did I hear that correctly, Jenny? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so what are you hoping to be able to find out from this research that can impact what you're making today and in the future? I mean, we're going to find out a lot of things. When we start working with, um, with Ohio State University and that team over there, uh, first, we do is first thing we've done is like mind the current and existing research, which then sometimes can add more questions. So, for instance, we can find out a lot about watermelon rind because it's the it's the um, uh, it's it's the the most prevalent fruit or whatever in the world. So there's a lot studied about watermelon rind. But then we want to know, okay, is the same thing true about cantaloupe honeydew uh, rind? And there's some studies that say yes, but we want to find out more. Um, we can also uh, really study our end product and make sure that, um, you know, just really so we know exactly what's in it. We already know um, certain levels of fiber and so on, but there's all of these micronutrients and phytonutrients in watermelon rind and all of these rinds because they grew next to the soil um, that are good for us. And we're going to find all of that stuff out. Um, we'll be able to do tests on microbiome, all sorts of, all sorts of tests over the, over the coming months, years, and to have them as a research partner is invaluable and is your ultimate goal and i'll throw this out to both of you to have a greater impact in people's health or on the planet or are they equally important to you uh both and well, yep. <laughs> both and how about you it, one doesn't exist without the other in my in my opinion the the, the whole idea centers around both agreed yeah so if you could you know this is a it's a new bar you're using um, upcycled things, but what is the most revolutionary part about this, about flora? Well, the most revolutionary part, I think, is just, well, uh, first of all, that there isn't another bar that I know of that is um, that has fermented ingredients that's prebiotic super fiber, especially from these specific ingredients, which are so, it's like a super fiber. Uh, the way that um, the the microbiome really just like loves these these sort of rind ingredients was something I didn't know much about. And so they, they really are actually really good for you. Uh, I don't know of another company making it so easy to to eat these these ingredients. Um, just the idea that it's 12 plants, it's a really, it's a fiber forward bar that will help you achieve that every week. I would say also that we are primarily sort of, I guess our target is um, is, is kind of women. I mean, Obviously, we want everybody to have access to our bar and, and all of that. But I mean, a lot of the bars I feel like are kind of targeting kind of gym guys or they sort of seem a little more masculine to me. So I think that's something that's a little different as well. I mean, it's like just like Jenny's like we're not, you know, it's just we happen to be more feminine. It's not necessarily that we 
only want women to, to come in, but um, but I think it's appealing to women and, and, and moms who will share these as well. So it was, it was part of the whole design and branding, I imagine, because when I look at both Jenny's, which I can picture, even if I didn't know it was Jenny's, I remember the logo, like, you know, I can picture it, right? Um, and when I looked at Flora, it looked like it had softer colors in it. Of course, I'm looking at it from the Kickstarter in my page, so I don't know exactly. Um, but was that part of the process? Were you guys looking to create a brand that was a little bit more feminine and soft as well? Well, I think it's actually very similar to Jenny's in that um, in that the colors are kind of poppy. There's there's different colors, and then when you when you see it in person, there's this pattern on the back that we had made um, for us by a, an incredible animator named Max in LA. And he made these beautiful little uh, fruits and I gave him a list and some uh, illustrations, but of flowers and fruits, because each one of the bars has like a fruit and then a flower or tea element to it. And so that's like raspberry, rose, or brambleberry, uh, lavender. They're reminiscent of some of the flavors that we've made at Jenny's, but even the packaging with this beautiful hand-drawn illustrations in the back is reminiscent of kind of how we, um, we at Jenny's we always wanna convey what it tastes like with your eyes. So it should look like how it tastes. And that was really what we were going for with these bars too. So there's a crossover, they're related. Um, but the other thing that's really cool about the bars when you look closely is that these um, these fruits, there's some like alien kind of looking fruits, unidentifiable fruits that could also be microbes um, if you look closely. So it's a really sweet um, design, I think, uh, but it's actually, you know, it's related to Jenny's and how it feels. So, and I just want to go back because I know you founded Jenny's and you've been doing that for a long time. And so this is a new endeavor where you have partners. I don't know if you have partners at Jenny's. Do you have partners at Jenny's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Didn't in the beginning, but yeah. In, in the beginning. So what is it like for you guys to work? I mean, you're in different places, right? Jeremy's in California, you're in Ohio, Mark is in, I feel like New Jersey, yes. if memory serves me right, I'm not sure. Um, but as founders, as partners coming together, you know, while you're not together to brainstorm, to come up with all that, what are some of the, what's the big, three biggest challenges you face? Well, let's see. Um, I mean, there are challenges, but there's also, I think the, the the benefits far outweigh the challenges because if I had to just find people who are local to me to help do this, it would be very difficult. Whereas right now we get the best people who really are committed to it um, on it. I also really do believe in this distributed idea of a team because we can kind of decide when we need to do work and we're all working really hard and we're all working long hours, but we're deciding when we do them. Like, you know, we all have families, we all have things that are happening around us as well. And I'm a mom, I have two amazing kids. And, and so, so sometimes the schedule is not the same as it used to be. It's not just nine to five. So it's pretty cool actually to do it. I, I don't think there's all that many drawbacks. Obviously, um, you know, we can't do, we can't just, Jeremy and I can't just get in the kitchen together. Like that's a little bit of a drawback, but we do come together pretty, pretty regularly. And that's part of our cadence because we do believe very much that we have to be actually in person. And then we're finding that when we're in person, we also are drawn to do things like go to the sound bath and, you know, do some meditation and, you know, have some breathing exercises and then actually do some work together. So, um, yeah, we like, we kind of have the best of both worlds, I think. Well, I can tell you, everybody that works with me on Essential Ingredients, Next Year Purpose, Next Year Studio, everybody's remote. And yeah. there is a learning curve to it mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it, it requires a little bit more, for us at least, it requires a little bit more uh, thoughtfulness in terms of people's time zones and things like that. But like you said, it allows you to draw on people's expertise that maybe you don't have locally. And equally, you know, because people aren't going into the office, so to speak, every day, I think it's becoming more of a norm. I don't know. How about you, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, so being, you know, being a chef, I I always daydreamed about having a remote job and I just never thought it would be possible and and here we are. I've manifested it. Um and it's really awesome like um it's it's great, but I I would say that you, you know, in order to make it happen, you have to be highly self-motivated. Um but but in general, I love it. And, uh, you know, they always say uh, fondness makes the heart, I mean, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's some some social advantages to just coming together and really maximizing our time when we're together and then being able to uh, focus when we're on our own. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. So I want to 
just ask a couple more questions. And one is that, you know, when you, when Jenny, I believe you were first working with Mark and you guys were looking to you know, change from the baked goods to the, the bar now, and you had six other, 12 other things in between. Um, when did you guys realize that bringing on somebody like Jeremy was integral to your growth? Well, Mark and I, um, yeah, we started working. Mark has been my business advisor for years. And um, and then also Adrian, who works with Mark, um, was my coach. And so this is actually one of the great advantages of um, of this company and other ones that we're doing is that we are actually starting from a place of uh, sort of symbiotic um, uh, uh, talents, I guess, and also working from this place of how to do communication first, communication and healthy um, uh, relationships first. Um but Mark and I, um, wait, I'm sorry, what was the actual question? Because I got my head around the other. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> when did you, I was... when, so you and Mark, Mark was your business coach. He was helping you, whether it was the Jenny's or this new initiative. At what point did you realize you wanted somebody with Jeremy's talents to sort of oh, yeah, of course. round out the uh, team? Yeah, so Mark and I are working on a, on a whole bunch of different things. That's where I was going. And, um, and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to be in the kitchen all the time. And frankly, I have a different skill. I've made ice cream my entire life, which means even when I do baked goods, they're meant to be frozen. It's a totally different thing. So I definitely knew that I needed somebody beyond my own expertise to, to come in and, and kind of take the reins of that. And uh, so that was, that's that, I mean, honestly, I don't know that I believe that we would find somebody who was as great as Jeremy, but um, we were very lucky too. And uh, because it's not just talent, as you know. I mean, it's always so much more than that. Uh, it's just really understanding the vision, understanding our customers, understanding um, what we're trying to do. And there's just a, such a nuance to it. So I think we just, it was, I, honestly, I just think so many things are happening because the universe puts people together and puts ideas together. And it just, all of this is happening because it's supposed to happen, to be honest. That's what I think. I think that that's great. I mean, I, I, I sort of live by that motto too. Mm -hmm. So Jeremy, when you were approached by... Mark and Jenny, who were working on this product, um, when did you know that this was something you really wanted to commit to? Um, yeah, that's that's actually a pretty interesting um, topic. Um, so when Mark first approached me, you know, this whole thing we're doing is very um, emergent, right? There isn't a lot of uh, data on what we're doing. And so when he first approached me, especially about the baked goods, initially we were thinking of, we we're putting fermented vegetable flours in the baked goods. Um, honestly, I thought it was a wild idea, um, but, but I'm an energy person and the energy I got from Mark, uh, something in the back and I've been practicing trying to say yes, um, for the last couple of years now and just the energy I was getting from him, I, I said yes. And so, um, and then when I say yes, I'm true to my word. So I, I started working on it and then he came out to meet me about, um, couple of months, I think it was a couple months after I started. And that really sent it home for me. Mark's a very special person. Um, he confided in me a lot of personal things that I have and kind of um, personal things that aren't common that I relate to very, very much. And, uh, and that in that feeling and energy from that conversation definitely let me know that that this is this was the right path. Yeah, I echo that. Mark is a very unique human being, and we are very lucky to be united by him, honestly. Agreed. That's amazing. Well, I had a limited conversation with him, and in that limited conversation, I felt I had a great conversation, learned a lot about what he was doing, and he really just wanted, he was offering me help and suggestions, which I really appreciated as well. So before yeah, we come to a close here, we want to know about Flora and if and what other uh, SKUs you may have coming up. Well, we have um, a lot of ideas. We have, I mean, obviously our pancake mix we're going to do, but we, we can really make almost anything. We're also going to be getting into probiotics in custom strains, uh, which we can then actually supply anybody with those kinds of strains from our own production. Um, so we've got a lot of other things on deck right now. And for the foreseeable future, we're focused on these uh, amazing bars and we'll see how people respond. So I know that you guys are half Flora and you have a ton of ideas. And I also know that you have, you just kicked off a Kickstarter. So I'd love to share with our listeners and our viewers a little bit more about 
what this Kickstarter is and what it's going to enable you to be able to do and what they and how and what they get out of it by participating and being part of this community. Yeah, we launched a Kickstarter. Um, and if you go, you can buy, you can pre-order our bars, which, uh, which is pretty cool. And that helps us then get into production. Uh, but even bigger than that, it helps us understand how, um, how much people want this product. So we're learning so much and we're gauging interest and we're getting questions from people because ultimately uh, the way that I like to build a company is right alongside our customers from the very beginning. So we're, we're doing this Kickstarter mostly to listen and to just gauge interest. And so far it has been incredible, overwhelming and extraordinary. And uh, we want to keep it going. Okay. So, so if you could, would you share with me how much, what was your goal when you first kicked off the Kickstarter? Our goal with Kickstarter was, I mean, we, we, we didn't know how much we could make. We set the goal at $10,000 and that would get us to, you know, put these, uh, these bars into production. And we more than doubled that, like in a day, I mean, we, we hit the goal in like two hours. And so it was awesome. We gave, you know, we just, we realized right away that people are very interested in what we're doing. We weren't sure to be honest. So it's been great. It's been so cool. So $10,000, a few hours, you're already exceeded that. You already have a community. How many people are part of this community that are on Kickstarter with you along for the ride? Well, we're only a day in or, or just a day in and we've got 300 backers already. And that may be, who knows, gone up at this point. Um, so it's pretty great. We're, we're growing on Instagram quite a bit. I just really think that people responded to this idea in a way that we just had no idea. Um, and so it's, it's cool. It's so cool. So motivating for us. It's great. And I can say that I contributed a little too. Yay. Thank you. Happy to support. And so to that end, we're going to include your Kickstarter for you guys in the newsletter and in the show notes so that people can learn more about it, read about the product, read about how they can make a contribution and what that gets them so that they can continue to be part of your community. Thank you so much. This is so great. Thank you. Jeff. So Jeremy, any last words, anything else you want to share? No, I think we, we covered a lot. No, but thank you so much for having us on greatly appreciated. Yeah, it was great to have you guys on. Um, and I'm excited to share your information, your stories and everything else. And I think at another time, maybe we can even come back and revisit it and see how things are progressing. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you, Justine.